if it will record your crunch and just like a crush, crush, crush. Okay. Uh, we'll see you later on. Okay, anyway, hello. <laughs> um, I've been asked uh, by a few people, really just like a handful, um, on Instagram to share some of the patterns that I've been preparing uh, for my Christmas gifts this year. And this year has been the first year where I've um, gathered uh, or rather, I've had the time to make uh, Christmas knit Christmas gifts for pretty much everyone I wanted to gift, and uh, I I used a handful of free patterns uh, and a few paid, but I think I'll mostly share the free patterns that I've gathered so far with you uh, and some of the some of the, the of these of these I have made myself and some are yet to be made and some just seem really interesting but I don't have a plan for them just yet but maybe you do maybe you have a, a baby you want to gift something to or you have uh, just the right yarn for uh, some of these projects so uh, there's no order to this I've just opened up my laptop here on Ravelry and I have uh, a tag three i'm gonna start off the top uh which is this shawl uh it's a it's a triangular shawl called lacy bactus it's by terry montonen sorry if i uh, mispronounce any of the names I'm not a native to any of these uh so this is a lacy version of another published uh shawl uh and it's by the looks of it, knit from one end to the other as it increases up to the middle, forms a triangle and then decreases on the other side. And what I like about it is, what I like about all of these triangle showers, which I'm really new to, is you can adjust uh, according to how much yarn you have. So say you have like only 100 grams or like 80 grams of a skein, you divide them. I tend to leave a few grams over for the, for the second half of the scarf. And I just knit up to the half, depending on how much I have, and weighing the grams left. And then I just like continue the second part, which uh, is my kind of scarf. <laughs> so this one is a really uh, easy one, honestly. Uh, from the pictures, it has a garter edge. It's garter all around, like so you knit fronts and backs. And then there's a, a, a simple eyelet where you simply uh, and the two together to make the hole and then you yarn over to create the next one and that's how you keep your stitches intact and you probably increase on one side and keep it uh, straight on the other and that's what makes the triangle darter scarves are really fun for me because they're an easy knit however they don't drape as nicely as sometimes i would like to still if you like probably knit it on a, on a larger needle so it calls for three millimeters so i would knit this on 3.5 for fingering, uh, I think it will make a more squishy, more sort of like slightly more drapey sc scarf. Uh, and you can make this in two colors as well. So yeah, that's my first pattern for you. The second one is called Laid Edges. Um, and it's a sock pattern in DK. Uh, I'm really new to socks, but I'm completely obsessed. <laughs> so uh, I've been saving all the free patterns because I want to try out every type of heel, every type of uh, cast on. So far, I've only done uh, top down. And uh, what I like about these socks is the slight, the, 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 the edging that they have on both sides of the sock. And it's this like chevron pattern. Really want to learn how to make this. I just don't have enough DK yarn um, in a in the in the right amount. Honestly, I have a lot of like 50 gram DKs skeins, uh, little minis uh, and whatnot, and I don't have enough for a pair in a solid color. But this is something that I have on my uh, to knit list. Um, it it seems relatively easy honestly it seems like a simple vanilla sock and then it has like that's that that cute uh, edging on the side so that's a definite knit for me um yeah that's on three millimeter needles which i have i use a small uh, little nine inch ne nine inch uh, circular needles but that's a little crampy but i i can't get around um magic loop or um double pointed needles so anyway uh that's my second uh recommendation um Something that I found very interesting, I don't have a plan to knit it, but it looks like something you can whip up pretty quickly because it's also knit in DK, is this dumpling bag. Um, and it's by Pearl Soho, or it's rather it's published in, uh, in Pearl Soho, it's by Jenny Lee. And uh, it's also knit in DK, it's knit on 3.775 millimeter needles, but honestly you can 
you can just accommodate for your yarn. You can probably knit this in worsted as well. You can probably knit this in like fingering heel double. Um, and it looks like a really fun project bag or like a bag to just carry around with you like that. But I think the point is uh, for it to be a project bag. Uh, they've knitted in linen, which is really nifty. I do have some linen yarn. I actually have some like really um, itchy, worse, uh, itchy, uh, rustic, like sort of uh, in Bulgaria we call this like live wool, um, and it's uh, it's very like scratchy, but it it's very stiff, and you can probably like knit it bigger and then like shrink it in the um, washing machine and just throw it in there with your regular um, clothes, uh, with your regular laundry, and then see what happens. And, and it becomes stiff that way, right? And it will become like an even sturdy or hardy uh, sort of bag. So that might be my plan for this one if I want to try it out. Um, so yeah, that's like my my third pattern for you. I um, also have a great love for knitted softies. Uh, I've only made one so far and it's had a, a very um, sort of... Um, a hard life. It used to sit on this shelf here and I didn't touch it, it just sits there. It's my battery, uh, not my battery, my, my card got full. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I was talking about the softies. So uh, my my fox that I had knit, uh, it was called something F the fox. I'm gonna list it here. Uh, it got incredibly uh, eaten by moths or I think it's a carpet bug more like it. I haven't seen moths but I have seen this little like caterpillar looking thing and uh, I keep like catching them and throwing them away uh, but uh, it, it got incredibly eaten all over <laughs> so I um, uh, I've decided to throw it in the washing machine to wash I had patched it up it, it shrunk down it looks really goofy but I still have a big love for softies and this one this pattern that I have here is also a free pattern called the fuzzy mitten lamb and it's really cute. Uh, I like that it uses small amounts of yarn. Um, it's knitted in worsted yarn as well. You could also probably felt it and make it like a shrink, a shrunk, a shrunken down like little toy. Um, and uh, it's something that I really want to knit uh, when I have the time after the Christmas season has passed. Uh, I wonder if I can actually knit this in boucle. Uh, and I have some boucle here that uh, I have been gifted. Uh, it's a little intimidating to work with this thing. Like if you don't knit it on like really large needles, it, it keeps, I keep like poking into it and sort of like, like I can't pick it up properly. I don't know if it's just me, it's probably just me. Um, but uh, I have this yarn and I do want to use it up. I have no idea what it is, so it's a mystery bouquet. So there's that. Um, but I think it would look really good on a lamp. It, oh, it's, this is the proper, <laughs> the proper yarn for uh, making a, a, a lamb or a sheep soap tea. It is uh, incredibly uh, torn through this one, but we'll make it work. It doesn't. It won't be noticeable when you tie the ends together. So yeah, the fuzzy mitten land by Barbara Prime. <laughs> by Barbara Prime. I'm sorry, I have a, a trouble saying that name. <laughs> Um, another softie that I've, I have a f quite a few of them here, um, another softie that I've uh, had my eye on is called Mr. Schnitzel the Pig. <laughs> it's really cute and um, it's knitted in sport weight, but obviously you can probably knit it in whatever you want. Uh, that's that's kind of the, 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 the beauty of a softie, they don't, or shawls or that sort of thing, they don't need to be um, engage um so yeah this like really chubby looking little pig what i like the most about this is the fact that it has like a striped suit i mean it looks like a big bean <laughs> big bean with legs and uh and a, no uh, a nose and it's called a nuzzle muzzle i don't know um uh and uh and the ears it looks really cute i think this would also look like really sweet as a, a tiny little uh keychain or like a charm for a backpack or something like that. if you have like a like a friend you want to gift this to and it's not too uh overwhelming to give them like a whole toy <laughs> um a giant toy so yeah this one is also free uh really fun pattern it looks like it looks uh, it looks kind of it's just it probably starts with like a small a small uh cast on increases you knit a tube, you leave spaces for like the hands to pick up stitches and then the, the mouth, the, the, the snout, snout? Is it a snout? It's a snout, I don't know. And and then you decrease steadily for the head. Really cute toy. Uh, I think it would make a great baby toy because it's so simple and squishable. Um, so yeah, definitely on my wish list. Definitely not something I'm, I want to knit. Uh, maybe not by the end of the year, but by the end of this uh, uh, winter, winter period. Um, Another softy that I have uh, in my 
what is it called? A Q, and my rabbit with a Q is called the porcini mushroom. I think that's what it is, a porcini mushroom uh, by Norman Schwartz, I think. Uh, is this glorious little mushroom? It's so well shaped. I really, I really adore how how realistic it looks. Um, and and you can still knit this in all kinds of neutrals. There's, it's like really unrestricted. Uh, it's the gauge says as it's as it's this is no wearable. You really don't have to worry about gauges. Like my favorite descriptor. <laughs> don't worry. I don't like swatching very much. I only swatch for sweaters, and that's pretty much it. Sometimes for hats because I do like a snug fit. And so that's uh, another, it, it, it says it takes two hours to finish one and you only need scrap quantities of fingering yarn, which is amazing. That's a, that's a great uh, additional gift. And you can, like, you can add like little eyes, you can add buttons for eyes and like embroider a little smile or something. That's just so, such a, um, like a, like a customizable pattern, I feel like. You can probably add like little bubbles for the, the cap of the mushroom and you can make it like a, like a fly amanita uh, mushroom as well, like a poisonous looking one <laughs> or a magical one, it's up to you. Uh, so that's another cutie, cutie pattern that I have. Maybe I should change it up a little bit and not stop talking about the softies, but I have like three more, uh, I guess. Another, uh, it's a pair, this one is a pair and it's actually for boucle and that's how I found it because I, I typed boucle and I was like, what, I, what can I do? Is there already a pattern for this? Uh, but this is so adorable. These, this like teddy, teddy bear bunny combo. I feel like this would make the best gift for a kid. Um, it's a crochet pattern. <laughs> so this is a little bit unusual for me. I, I've barely ever done crochet. The only thing I've ever made myself for myself is uh, a granny square small blanket. And I've tried crocheting hats to no avail. Nothing ever that's really wearable for me. I haven't ever done anything successfully that I've reached for. But toys is a whole different thing. It actually doesn't even look crochet because of the boucle, because of the texture it creates. But it's so pretty, it's so well done. Um, and I I think you can buy the pattern. However, you can also um, have a free, ver like see the free version, which is just a, like a, YouTube video, I believe. I think the lady is Korean. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, I'm not entirely sure. It does say language is English, so it is in English as well. But uh, the the video that I saw, I believe, was Korean. Maybe I'm mistaking it with something else. Maybe it's mistaking it with like a second pattern. So ignore this. Um, but yeah, definitely want to make one of these teddy bears. They're so freaking cute. Maybe you're a bunny person. I don't know. And this pattern also comes in uh, a fleece variety. So like for your fleece. Uh, yarns. I'm um, not a big fan of fleece, so I, I would probably skip on that myself. Um, but, and then the bunny has like these long drapey ears. It's so adorable. <laughs> um, another pattern that's probably the last softy pattern for a while is called Tzatziki and Terry. And they're, I think this is the pattern that I sh saw. Uh, yeah, I think this is the Korean pattern that I saw a video of. But the video is really well descriptive, so you don't have to worry uh, too much about it, I think. I mean, I, I don't I don't knit soft tees that much. I only have the one. So, and even I understood what uh, most of this was about. And it's so cute. These are so sweet. I really like how the, 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 the snout, the face of the bear is shaped. So cute. I love the little ears as well. I love, I love the little bow she made for them. Really cute. It's just quite the small softy that this turns. It's like yay big. Very, very tiny. Um, but I feel like it could be a, a quicker, a quicker project because of that. Maybe, perhaps, I don't know. Softies take a while. They're, they're very fiddly for me because I, I do, I don't do magic loops. So I do knit them on DPNs and I knit them on two DPNs of all things. So yeah, uh, I think we'll we'll move on from softies for now, and I'll show you one of my favorite hat patterns, which is called the head sock. I love that name. <laughs> I've already knit two of these hats. Uh, one for myself with this uh, very uh, big, I think, bulky yarn. I need to check what kind of yarn I used for this. Let me let me see real quick. Um, I knit this from two skeins of BC Garn Simila Grosso. I've never used it before. I really enjoyed it. It was on sale. I got them for three euro per skin from a, a store in Aschaffenburg uh, when I was visiting uh, uh, Melina for, in Germany. Uh, and I love how it turns out. I love the decreases. Uh, I love how tiny it looks when it's like unstretched and then you put it on and it becomes this like big thing. I'm not gonna put it on right now, 
but it's such a snug hat i really love the yarn i wonder how it will uh, hold up in the in the cold outside i really i really hope it's very warm and, and snug because i've made one for my dad as well and he spends a lot of time outside because of his work and uh his i did with uh drops nord i think maybe one strand of drops nord and one strand of drops floor i just had these like random uh single skeins from like a sale that i got once uh so this was really great for that uh i i used up both the skeins almost completely i had like a few grams left of each uh and uh yeah made the same exact pattern I, for the orange one, I casted 96 stitches. So the pattern itself, I think, is for fingering weight, but I did it on, on four millimeters for myself, and I casted 96 stitches in the rib, and that's pretty much all you do. You just knit in the rib for, like, the longest time before you start decreasing for the crown. Um, and uh, I feel like I did something similar for this one. Let me just see my notes for this second one. No, for this I I knit on 3.5 millimeters and I cast it on 112 stitches. Uh, but this is not too hard for you to figure out for yourself. And also this hat has been knit so many times you can go through people's um, notes and you can uh, simply sort of copy them. <laughs> like copy homework, but don't make it the same. <laughs> no, you can make it the same, like whatever. Uh, so yeah, another free pattern. I love it so much. I, I honestly feel like knitting more of this hat because it's just so universal and Pretty much everyone who's seen it likes it, like it fits uh, both dudes and girls and uh, and dads. <laughs> Maybe my mom would like it too, I don't know, she's kind of like that. She's first At first she's like, mm, what's this? But then you put it on and she's like, oh wow, what, actually I saw this in another store somewhere and it's like so good, like will you make one for your mother. <laughs> so anyway, that is one of my hats that I have for you. Um, another really sweet gift that I actually started last year and completed this year it is called the cloudburst and it's a pair of mittens and uh, this is my version of them let me see if the camera will pick it up or if it will be too wide for it nah it's okay uh, so I've made these mittens and I used holst garn I believe yeah but held double so I, I, since I only had one skein, uh, one ball, one cake of each, I used one of them was the cotton version of whole scar and the other one was like the woolen, uh, like the soft wool uh, version. And uh, I think they came out really well. They were also different whites as well. Like one of them was more ivory and the other one was a, was a warmer uh, white bleached or non-bleached or something. But uh, it has like this really pretty lace motif. It looks really goofy until you block it. So don't, don't worry about that if yours doesn't look like this if it's your first time knitting lace as well and uh, these mittens are going to a dear friend of mine and I hope she doesn't see this video until I gift them to her um, I'll probably have to like gift them earlier than Christmas <laughs> so, that, so that I can publish this before Christmas so you have time to actually knit these so cloudburst pattern also a free pattern uh, I don't think I'll ever, I will include any paid patterns in here but uh, just in case it's a free pattern as well um, I don't know no I didn't I don't, that's why they came out bigger for me just because I didn't follow the gauge but that's why they're going to my friend because I think she has slightly bigger hands than me I kind of have like baby hands um, so yeah fingering weight three millimeter needles um, it, actually the pattern is longer than what I've knit so I think I only did five repeats of this uh, lace and the pattern has seven I think repeats if you like a longer thing I think I was just lazy oh my god that's new What's new here? Uh, so yeah, that's that's one of the mittens that I've had planned out. Something that I really, really wanted to make is uh, called the Rug Sweater by Junko Okamoto. Uh, and it's this really pretty sweater. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, and it's not the fault of the sweater, it's just my personal preference. I don't like when sweaters have like a very deep yoke and then like your, your, your um, like arm starts around here somewhere and it's fine for home, but when you put on the coat this thing just like jams up in your coat it's a lot of material here and then your like um your waist gets exposed because it, it just raises up but it's such a pretty pattern i really like the motifs they're so so uh so handsomely made um so yeah i really want to make this pattern and i want, probably will just uh, adjust the sleeves and i'll separate much higher up and and knit, continue knitting separately sleeves and, and body 
and yeah uh it's a free pattern a free sweater if you're so inclined if you have a sweater worthy person in your life um here's the pattern for you i guess it's a it's a pretty great one i i really enjoy it i really like it i don't know if i have any of the required um fa uh, thread like any of the required yarn for this it calls for bulky i really don't like bulky not gonna lie <laughs> it's not not a fan of bulky weight yarn um biggest i'll do is worsted i think i don't even like aran so much maybe if i hold, hold double like two fingering weights and it will become like a slightly bigger dk mm, not a fan i really am not uh we'll see about that though uh, this is a very further along the way thing and i don't even know if you can make it for uh for a christmas unless you're like a maniac about it maybe bulky is and it's up quick maybe it does uh, so yeah, free pattern for you, free sweater. I think it's the only free sweater that I've, add I've added on here, but I just had to because I like it so much. Something else that I really, really love, and it's um, it's something that I probably knit more than once, is called the Blink Toque. It's a beanie. I don't know how do you say that word. By Kiyomi Bergen, I believe. Uh, so the Blink Toque is, Toque B, is this lovely little thing. Um, so this is my version of it. Uh, it's made with uh, letulopi or or plotulopi. I'm not I'm not sure what the difference is. I've never used that kind of yarn. It's the unspun or rather I think it's unspun woolen rusticy Icelandic yarn uh, that I've never tried before. Uh, but I I just uh, adjusted the gauge for myself and I knit this one from single skeins again like single skeins of i think drops lima for the browns and here as well and the white was also like a lima or peru or whatever <laughs> i don't know i didn't write any of these down and then i had whatever whatever other browns i had laying around so like this is from the base color but then here i used another like reddish color and here i i held mohair and like a fingering sock yarn double just to make this uh in the same way that she had written in the pattern again three I'm so happy it's free. It was such a great pattern, but I was so unsure if I'd be uh, uh, into making the color work here, and it turned out so good. And once you wash it, it like sits in even further. Really great pattern going for one of my friends. I'm not gonna say for whom any of these things are in the slight off chance that they actually get to this video and see it uh, before I gift them the pattern, the finished stuff. The only difference I think I made for this is I had to account for the limited amount of yarn that I had, especially from the brown. So uh, I, I knit the brim shorter. I also knit it in two by two because I'm not a big fan of one by one. Uh, so I knit this in two by two, full double, uh, extra white here. The original pattern is uh, like a solid color all throughout and then just the color work is different. And yeah, really enjoy this small little pom-pom. I also think I, I might have changed the way the decreases are made and I don't know why I did that. Made my life comfortable, uh, like uh, complicated for myself. So, um, my decreases are like, what is this, what is this called, like a spiral decrease, I guess? Looks really nice though, I like how this looks on this beanie. And uh, it's a really cute beanie and I'll probably make one for myself and other people, if I have the time. Because <laughs> there's still a lot more to do, I've only tackled like, like three quarters. Still have a quarter of like stuff to make, maybe, I think, maybe? Or maybe have <laughs> I don't know uh, so yeah that's a, another free hat for y'all um, very happy with it I, I, I warm recommendations for it it was really easy to I mean it's just a beanie it's a simple beanie it has a really pretty color work to it another thing that I would like to make and I think it would be a quick make I've never made a hairband before is that what it's called yeah and I have this one called Frida by Emily Lewis uh, very simple just um, like a twisted like it, it, it makes like a little twist here and I'm pretty sure you just knit like a tube um, all throughout until you get your measurement you can just like pinch them together in some phantasmagorical way and you sew them together and it creates this like hairband but uh, a hairband is something on my wish list that I want to make for a gift I don't want to say for myself I kind of sometimes feel like I don't want to put my whole hair in a or in braids or anything and it gets all messy and whatnot so I can just tie it on a ponytail and just wear a headband revolutionary I know um, so yeah what a, I want to make one of these uh, hair bands uh, and it's uh, it's in DK in the original pattern it's held double so it's it's a fingering plus small hair held double which you can obviously just substitute it for a DK uh, this pattern has been made like so many times um, but 
that's kind of the beauty in it. Um, I really like more the rustic uh, versions of it, where it's just like a like a nice grey, marled, pretty rustic yarn. It's a really good one. Uh, so that's like a simple a simple pattern you can probably make. Um, the next ones are kind of how do I say? I have bad experiences with it, but I feel like I just did it poorly. And it's uh, these felted slippers uh, by Drops. And uh, it's really just what it is. It's just you knit this giant slipper and you throw it in the washing machine and it comes off uh, a smaller slipper that fits your leg. And uh, I was really lazy. Um, it called to knit, so my foot's 25 centimeters. It calls to knit a, a, a like a like a like a like a slipper that's 44 centimeters and I was like there's no way that thing is gonna shrink so much to fit down my foot and it does <laughs> because I knit let's say 37 or something like like 10 centimeters less than what they call for and I can't put it on and I don't even know where it is I don't know it's here it's this <laughs> it's incredibly small it's child size uh, it felted completely it's really firm uh, very stiff uh, and I made this with something, I think it's by, I got this yarn a while ago from uh, a hobby and it's called Happy Sheep or something and it's just like wool for felting or, or, or I mean, if you're adventurous you can probably make a sweater and like wash it by hand forever but it's very heavy, it's very big, it's very chunky, it's like a bulky weight yarn I think uh, so yeah, this is like a fun thing that I want to recreate again and this time I won't cheap out on uh, knitting uh, and I'll probably make it the whole length and it's super easy too so you start, you cast on you cast on like a few stitches here, you increase and then you just knit 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 and then you garter 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 and then uh, you sew it here I think and that's it and then you throw it in the washing machine and it comes, off like a, comes out like a, a smaller, stiffer slipper much smaller <laughs> Than expected. So just don't don't cheapen out on the on the measurements like I did. And just knit it all the way through. I feel like this is like a very quick thing. I I feel like I knit this in like an hour and a half or something. So like you can churn one of the like a like a pair of these in a day, which is a really fun uh, quick gift for someone. And uh, you can probably add something on the bottom because I feel like this is gonna become a mess when you um, wear it around the house. Like it's gonna pick up all your dirt. I mean, if you're into that, it's like a free, free um, cleaning <laughs> session, but uh, I don't like that. I don't like things getting on my socks, and that's why I wear like rubber slippers everywhere. So yeah, uh, that is that is the 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 slipper edition I have. You could probably knit it old garter as well. I think I might do that next time because I didn't want to pearl anything. Kind of lazy. Um, the next uh, the next free pattern I have is called the Jasmine scarf. And it's this really pretty, it's a Pearl Soho uh, pattern. Very pretty, like sort of feather motif that's formed. I have no idea how it's made. I haven't like gone through the pattern. I just have it in my wish list forever. And I haven't had uh, like a, a good amount of um, yarn dedicated for this project to use. So yeah, uh, once I have, it's worsted. It's worsted on four millimeter needles. And it's just a simple long rectangular scarf and it's in this really pretty pattern. It honestly looks so good in the white color they have chosen. So I might, if I were to make it, I'll probably do the same. The only thing I don't like is how the bottom hem kind of rolls up. I wonder if there's like a remedy for that. Maybe you make like more garter stitch at the bottom or you make like a, a knit one pearl one ribbing or something like that, just to keep it flat. I'm not a big fan of that, but it looks so pretty. It's such a pretty scarf. Maybe you can make something like that by the time it's Christmas. Maybe. I don't know. Honestly, lace kind of intimidates me always, even if it's simple lace. Uh, but yeah, very, very pretty scarf. <laughs> kind of want to go buy yarn for it. <laughs> yeah, so next up, I have this uh, sock pattern that's been on my wish list since before I even started making socks. Uh, and now I make like just like tubes. I make tubes with afterthought heels. like forever and ever but this pattern uh, is on the wish list because it's like a nice uh, little scrap buster thing uh, you only need like uh, to have like a consistent white color and then you can put the color broken motif oh yeah, I forgot to say what it was it's called color palette socks by Laura Murats uh, and it's it's what it is it's it's like little blocks of color separated by I think uh, an, a twisted rib 
a one by one twisted rib and uh, I think the heel the original heel let me see because I have like a, someone else's uh, sock saved up oh the original heel is a is a, a heel flap and gusset but you can probably make this how I love making it which is in the uh, in the, an afterthought heel, you can probably add an afterthought heel to a tube like this. Looks really cute. I love how this looks. Would be a really nice. Uh, it would be a really nice Christmas sock as well, like with green and red. Very classic. Uh, so yeah, that's a, that's my first sock installment for this. Um, another hat that I have on my wish list that I don't know if I'll be making this year, but I'll definitely be making it because I love how it looks with the little. Uh, I don't know what this pattern is called. It's called. Cloudy Days, no, it's called Six Sack. It's called Six Sack. That's what the name. Oh, it's uh, Zigzag. Smart. Uh, it's called Six Sack. Sorry, I had to start the camera again because it turned off on me. It's called Six Sack and uh, it's knit in DK and it's another cute little beady with a pom pom and it looks like it can be useful for all of my single 50 gram skeins because you knit the, the, the bottom part the brim and the folded brim um in one color and then you have like a whole bunch of color work and then you finish it off with another color which is great for me because i have a lot of those single skeins so yeah um pretty good hat i love pom-poms man it's slightly, slightly slouchy which i used to love when i was younger but now i like a more fitted hat but yeah oof kind of want to make it so little time um there is next up i have like a mitten pattern saved up it's called classic mittens by pearl soho and i haven't knit these but i have knit other mittens uh i think it's the world's simplest mittens i have knit this like a couple of times by now but mittens is like these are such a, a swift little knit uh i've made this similar to the mismatched uh for the class similar to this classic mittens uh pattern and i simply wanted to make the scalloped color work uh and m while my thumb increases here are done as you knit the mitten i believe that this classic mitten pattern is you first knit the whole thing and then you leave scrap yarn uh holes or rather you knit scrap yarn and create a hole later to then pick up the stitches and knit your thumb. I've never tried the fit of this mitten because I'm just so used to making these. But uh, yeah, uh, very pretty looking mitten. I like it a lot. Uh, in the same vein, uh, while we are on mittens, I made these recently, which I'm really, really proud of. These mittens, which are made with mohair and fingering held double together. Uh, and for the color work as well. The color work is actually uh, my never completed Birkin sweaters color work. I really just enjoyed how this work uh, looks. And then I just added this simple little design top and bottom. And this is again made with uh, the world's simplest mitten, I think it was called. I'm gonna link it below uh, as a base uh, for, for sort of the to determine the stitch count. Uh, but I mostly winged it throughout the whole thing. I even winged the mittens uh, decreases here because uh, I picked up 10 extra stitches <laughs> instead of the one. <laughs> I think it became too small and that's why I needed more room. And then I decreased on the... Let me see if it can s sort of focus on it. Um, it. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there we go. So I, I, it can crea I created like this sort of like triangle shaping thing by decreasing uh, every other row. row until I got to like a, a 22 I think stitch for for the for the thumbs uh, ribbing uh, anyway it turned out really good I, I love the fit of this uh, mitten and it's going for a, a friend that has much smaller hands than me so I'm definitely sure it will fit her uh, it's very snug it's very warm I uh, really enjoy how they came out ah, so sweet <laughs> so yeah another mitten I don't think I've done any other mittens this year. Yeah, it seems like it. my basket's kind of empty. Um, so uh, I think I'm nearing the end of this. Yeah, I have one more pair of socks, which is called the Basic Bed Sock uh, by Emily Bolduan. Another V pattern, DK, 3.5 and 3 millimeters. Uh, I really like this because it's two separate looking... Sorry. <laughs> two separate two mismatched socks that look kind of samey um, 
I think it, it, they, they make great gift socks uh, and you can use up all of your little leftovers of VK weight which I have plenty of <laughs> it's always like working around like busting that stash um, I do like doing that though uh, it's even seventh in my queue <laughs> in due time probably <laughs> I'll get to it uh, and yeah I really like the the color blocking of this I like that one sock has like a little bit of orange and a little bit of blue and the only <laughs> unifying thing between those two is the white heel <laughs> Very cute. I like them a lot. Uh, they probably they look like they would knit up considerably fast as well because they're DK. So yeah, uh, another one, another one to dream about. And the last one, the last pattern that I have is a baby knit. Uh, I had a friend who gave birth to a baby girl a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I think. And I had this uh, little 100 gram skein of cotton plus merino superwash wool in pink and it looked really sweet uh, and I thought hey maybe I'll make her a little um, baby gift for her for her first birthday uh, because I was visiting her on her first birthday and I made this hat this barely bonnet uh, hat uh, by pure stitches yeah by pure stitches it's really easy to make the ears are amazing they turn out so nice and squishy I think it's the best uh, bear pattern a uh, bear hat pattern that I've seen so far I really enjoyed it uh, and uh, I even might make it again for a friend of mine who's uh, expecting soon. Um, all in garter stitch, aside from the ribbing, uh, very well. It sits really well on the baby's head, even though there's no photos of it here. Uh, so yeah, I think that's all of the three patterns that I had initially uh, composed it. <laughs> composed it? Composed? For you and uh, last but not least I wanted to mention um, the Sophie scarf if you haven't already seen it but it's simply it's something that I, I feel like is one of the best uh, gifts that you can make simply because it knits up so fast so I made this in a day uh, from a single skein of I don't know what it is it's one of the alpaca one of the alpaca yarns the drops has but I forgot what it was and it's so pleasant it looks it feels so luxurious it's so nice and drapey it made for like the sweetest little scarf that you can give to someone and uh, I know who I'm gifting this one to um, and it's a uh, it's a quick knit and you can make many of them and even though the Sophie scarf is a paid pattern I feel like it's incredibly worth it because uh, if you have never knit scarves this was my first scarf ever uh, and I, actually this was the first one this uh, petroleum greenish color it doesn't come off well on camera but this is the first scarf that I made and it uh, taught me the I chord which while really simple it blew my mind at the time uh, and it uh, it showed me gradual increases it showed me how to make this like triangle uh, shape which is like very very subtle for this scarf um, and it's really quick it's I can't stress enough how quick this works up uh, for the one skein as well makes a cute little either extra gift to your already existing one or by itself it's really sweet can't help it can't help but like gush over it. It's so it's so squishy as well. Uh, warm recommendations for this pattern. Obviously, it's extremely popular, so it doesn't need it. But still, if you haven't, and if you're thinking about if you want to buy it, I would. And uh, another pattern that I have by uh, Petit Knit, which is one of the first hats that I knit this year, actually, is this. Uh, I think it's the Oslo hat, actually. And it's this one I made with um, Drops Kid Silk and the Nord, and I think Nord, a, a skein of Nord, drops Nord, and uh, the problem with, I uh, <laughs> don't want to keep saying that, the, 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 the thing is I didn't have enough yarn to follow the pattern all throughout because it calls for a, a triple brim, is what? I don't know, like you, you knit the double brim here and then you fold it on itself once more and it becomes this like really thick, nice, wintry well, I didn't have enough yarn from the from the drops one. Uh, the the mohair would probably be enough, but I didn't have enough from the drops uh, fingering weight yarn. Uh, so I kept it single like this, but it still looks really nice. Uh, turns out it's a little bit tight on me. It still fits, but it's just a little bit tight. So this one is going to my cousin for Christmas, and I know I can say that now because I don't think she watches my videos, so she, it, she'll be surprised when she gets this. Uh, but I really like uh, I really like how this turned out will probably have to make one for myself <laughs> and not cheapen out on the on the on the material it's such a pretty hat like it's so nicely constructed anyway that is i think all um of the gifts that i've made so far i've shown you everything i've shown you my plans and uh yeah i'll, I'll have to get cracking and uh, uh release this video 
as soon as possible so you will have time to make some of these gifts for your Christmas time for your Christmas gifting um what's today is the 7th of December I hope I can like edit this today and release it so that you can get a kraken yeah my, my camera is dying um thanks for uh, joining me <laughs> and uh to everyone who wanted to wanted me to make this video you are uh, I hope you get cracking I hope you enjoyed this and yeah see you uh, next time probably sometime around Christmas when I've made even more gift nets that I'm gonna babble about <laughs> no I'm not gonna show you I was gonna show you what I'm working on right now but it's, this is too long anyway so um, yeah goodbye uh, enjoy your crafting enjoy your uh, knitting for uh, the holidays Ooh, I'm so, so excited I wanna I wanna pack these already I wanna make tags and everything and wrap them up yeah Bye! <laughs>